think she thinks, oh, there's pearls. Look at the size of that mangrove. Holy moly. That's the big one. He's too good of a friend, I can't take him. How is it going, boys and girls? Welcome back. Uh-oh. How is <laughs> Welcome back to Key West Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. I've had a lot, a lot of feedback about the yard and the backyard. So we're gonna start utilizing it a little bit more. Um, this episode kind of be in and out of the backyard. Kind of show you what it's about and we'll try to incorporate it more. I uh, have today off, as you, know, as you know, or you may not know if this is your first time watching, I'm a full-time charter captain and um, part-time commercial spear fisherman and fisherman. Um, I don't get a lot of days off, but I have today off. Been doing office work and stuff all morning and that is my lovely fiance, Madeline. Been doing office work all morning and we wanted to have a little fun this afternoon. We're gonna make um, some grouper soup. I wanted to leave one of these cuts out and kind of show you what we started with. Um, in here is water, uh, a cup of mirin, garlic, onions, celery, a bunch of salt, and then some grouper scraps. Um, leave all the skin on everything. This is actually Will's recipe. I cannot take credit for it. Um, but what I'm doing is these are belly cuts from grouper. And if you look in here, you can see the amount of fat. Just almost like, kind of like bluefin, to bluefin tuna toro. You can see the fat like marbled in there. Um, but doing what I do for a living, I come across a lot of fish and a lot of fish scraps. Um, quite honestly, more than I am able to eat. We eat a lot of scraps. We eat collars, heads, throats, um, or um, ribs, the carcasses, um, as you know. But. Quite frankly, it's more than I can handle. So a lot of times I'll save these and these are all frozen. So we're gonna boil those down, make a soup. And while that is simmering, I will bring it up to a boil, then drop it to a simmer for about two hours or so. No exact science. Um, Madeline and myself are gonna go out and do some spear snorkeling. And that's what you're known for is your grace. We're gonna go do some spear fishing um, out behind the house and see if we can get some snappers to throw in the soup. Come along with us. You ready to go? Tuna wants to go. Tuna cannot come. Look at him, he's coming. <laughs> he wants no part in this. <laughs> huh? Yeah.
take this little boat out, I get about a million questions about it. It is called a Ginu, G-H-E-E-N-O-E. I'll put a link to their website in the description. And especially this steering right here. I go, I go back and it goes left. I go forward and it goes right. I don't know if you can hear me, but it's called a stick steering and it is a ton of fun. So I wanted to um, try a new spot. Kind of hate going. You don't want to go to the same spot over and over. And it's not like I go to them a lot. It's maybe once or twice a month. But I um, wanted to try to explore some new spots. But you keep driving. Um, the tide is pretty far down. So a lot of these other islands don't have a ton of water. Which typically mean there won't be nearly as much fish swimming around. But I'm going to poke around for a sec. Some barracudas. Bunch of barracudas. All right, neutral. There's a couple mangroves hanging out under the, well, the mangroves. So a lot of times when I do these backcountry videos, um, a lot of y'all are asking to shoot different species or look for different species, but quite honestly, the majority of the time all you're seeing is mangroves, which is why they're named that mangrove snapper. They like these mangrove roots. They make, good, they make great structure for the fish. We'll give this a look though, see if we can find something. Ah. So if this is your first time watching, or even if you're a returning viewer, you've met Madeline, but this is, oh, excuse New me. and improved Madeline. This is new and improved <laughs> Madeline, so. Would you like, do you want to tell them, or would you like me to tell them? What changes have you made in your life? <laughs> um, so I used to work a desk job, nine to five, and I realized probably right when I started that it wasn't for me. Um, and then I just recently gave notice and uh, now I'm a full-time real estate agent here in the Keys and then I also operate my paddleboard business, uh, Paddle and Madeline, full-time. So yeah, it definitely offers me a lot more freedom um, and flexibility to kind of enjoy the whole reason we're here in the Keys. So yeah, making moves. <laughs> so long story short. That was short. She, she watches me goof off all the time. <laughs> I got jealous, basically. And go fishing and going on the boat. And uh, she made the jump. So I'll attach all her social media stuff, her real estate stuff. And you can follow along on her journey as well as she goes from nine to five to freedom child. <laughs> freedom child, I like that. I just came up with it. <laughs> this trademark. <laughs> Enough rambling. Die flag. I have a feeling we won't see much traffic around here. Welcome back underwater, everybody. Quite honestly, I don't feel that there's a ton to narrate here. Um, so I'll comment on a couple short things as they pop up, but uh, these shallow water mangrove trips are really just becoming one of my favorite things. Reminds me of when I was younger, just kind of goofing off and hunting in the shallows, but they're just very enjoyable. Lots to look at, even if you don't spear anything, it's just, it's magical swimming around in the mangroves. So much life. 
you'll see right here, Madeline takes a shot and misses. And in her defense, hunting in these mangroves is very difficult. You're floating. You're kind of a little wobbly. You don't really have that stability you have as you take a dive underwater. Um, we started out pretty slow. We're about 20 minutes into swimming around. I know YouTube land. I always talk about it. Looks like it's just all highlights, but... Um, and I also wanted to mention, again, a lot of you guys are asking about other species in the mangroves. And quite frankly, if I'll use a metaphor, if I'm at the grocery store and my favorite fish is the same price as a fish I don't like as much, I'm going to pick my favorite fish every time. I'm already out here. If a mangrove swims by, I'm taking a mangrove every time. They're one of my favorites to eat. You can see one comes in here, kind of turns sideways, and luckily I got the stone shot on it. A big fan of those as you know and under these mangroves someone told me the word for this stuff I can't remember what it is it's like mud kind of you see the shaft kind of got stuck in there and just twist it to get that flopper to come out otherwise you may break your flopper off or something babe I got one yeah. try not to stir up the mud but I'm literally in like two feet of water Whew. So I'm going to shut up for a little bit and just kind of let you guys enjoy the scenery. You'll see coming up here, there's just, there are hundreds and hundreds of mangroves. A lot of them are small, but there are tons that are 12 inches. We're just kind of waiting for, you know, some that are just a little bigger, 14 to 15 inches. So you get a little better uh, yield from them, but um, just enjoy the scenery. a bigger one come in here on the left and they are just they're shifty little creatures you can hear me say ah that was him that was just the one that was a hair bigger that I was looking for but again these it's a lot harder than it looks tracking these things in here Madeline got herself a nice one unfortunately I missed the shot <laughs> Hold him up. Beautiful one, and you stoned it. I can't touch That's my girl. She stoned it. <laughs> Here, let me. Uh, I'm gonna gut. Hold him up again. I'm gonna gut and bleed him. Where? this place up. <laughs> huh? We yeah, just pick, pick your pick your point and don't move. This is like the big mangrove hole right here. They're everywhere. Uh, we may just go all the way around because I think we're about halfway around. I know, I am.
there's so much life. This is amazing. Uh -huh. So cool. So I brought another camera and held it in my hand. And again, I missed this shot. I, I brought it because last time my head cam kept coming out of the water. And I promise I'll get the hang of this. But um, put a nice shot on a decent sized snapper. And I thought it was a little low, so I didn't want to put too much pressure on it and tear it out so you'll see here um, I actually let go of the gun just to try and kind of let the fish run and tire itself out a little faster if I would have pulled on it I was I was worried that my shot was low and I didn't want it to tear out but um, you'll see here actually ended up being a good shot and uh, I think this was the biggest mangrove of the day and I'll I promise I'll get better at the second camera having it underwater on these shallow trips. I know it's annoying to have the camera coming up. But um thought about mounting it on my gun, but I've done that in the past and it actually jolts too much when you should fire the gun just from the, the recoil. But as always, I brain and bleed every fish. Give back those contents of the stomach back to the locals. Got plenty for dinner. dinner. Okay. Well, that was cool. Yeah, that was epic. I did not expect to see that many snappers, if I'm being honest. And big ones. Big ones, like really nice ones. I mean, we were in two, 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 feet? Feet, of, two feet of water at the most. We have never dove this spot before, I swear. At first it was looking kind of bleak, and then we got on the other side of the island. There was stuff all over, I mean. Madeline got her. That's yours right there. This one? Yeah. Hold it. Oh. That's yours, girl. We got plenty for dinner. <laughs> and a new spot. I'd like to come back and fish this one time. Uh, if we can get some live bait or some shrimp or something. Where's that spear? Some live bait or shrimp or something and rod and reel, that'd be fun. Under, you can see underneath the mangroves, they're just, they were all over the place. There were so many that I lined up on, I was like, eh, we've got a few already. All right, go beans. Uh, mangrove snuffles. All right. So I'm assuming Will, being the chef that he is, instinctually shut this off for me. Ooh, that smells like heaven. Gonna get the boat. Unloaded and cleaned up. We'll get to the soup. It's 
so afternoons like that are really my favorite days afternoons whenever um, I had never been to that spot before just kind of went to a new spot to check it out and there ended up being a ton of fish um, reminds me of when I was younger and I had a lot less resources and I got creative and would dive shallows and shore dive and all that kind of stuff it's a real pleasure to just get out there and kind of poke around sometimes as you can see there were plenty hopefully the camera turned out I brought two this time because I was in such shallow water last time I had pro trouble getting the footage to turn out but hopefully you could tell there was just there was snappers everywhere my goodness we could have had a lot more than we actually kept but this is plenty for what we need A smaller fish I can do that I can come in and go straight down um, and you do a pretty good job if you get used to it of getting the majority of it off of there but again you've seen some of my videos I I still eat those racks so a little left on there is no big deal So our broth is done. And I'm sure there's a bunch of different ways to do this. Um, I do love feedback. I love learning and love it when you guys share. And if you've got constructive criticism, by all means, share it. But don't tell me I'm doing something wrong. Half of the fun is learning. And this tastes delicious, so something's going on right. So I've got quite a bit of stuff left in there so quite honestly we normally uh, pick through the meat I gotta show you something real quick we'll pick through the meat um, but this meat has actually been in the freezer for a while in my chum freezer so I'm just using the fats out of it but you can look look at the amount of fat on the surface there that's all natural fat from that grouper mm, from that grouper belly but because this has been sitting in the freezer so long with um, blocks of chum and frozen bonitas and a bunch of other nasty squid and whatnot, not mixed with it, it was in the same freezer, but um, I'm going to pick through the meat and give it to the animals instead. And we're gonna use the mangrove snappers as our protein. I'm just going to strain all that, and quite honestly, I normally pick through the garlic. Mmm. Whew. Well, that one was rotten. Whew! That is yummy. We got a fly party going on here. Try to make this quick before the bugs get me. Let that set just a sec. The longer all that those contents set, I don't know if I'm in the frame. Hopefully I'm in the frame here. All those contents still have a lot of broth left in them, so I try to get as much out as I can. Get 
We get a really fine mesh strainer. Just because we put a lot of stuff in there, scales and bones and actually I've got a couple of ants in there somehow. That's alright, protein. Is everything I don't want, but these bugs are driving me crazy. So I was gonna try and finish this down here, but we're gonna have to finish this upstairs. Sorry about that. Bugs get a little wild uh, out here when the sun starts to set. Sunrise and sunset, the noceums will literally carry you away. So I moved this upstairs. Um, so I've got the broth boiling. We're actually gonna do the noodles in the broth. And we're gonna, this is going to be our protein for the meal. And we're just barely going to sear these. And I also wanted to say, I normally make excess of this. Again, this is Will's recipe. I fell in love with it. And during grouper season, I make it probably twice a month at least. But you put this in the fridge, the leftovers, it'll turn almost like um, jelly. You scoop some out and heat some up and you got more. Um, so broth boiling. We're just going to sear these barely. A lot of times when Will does this, we'll have like a, a, a sushi fish, like a mackerel or a tuna or something, and we'll put it in, um, put it in raw and let the broth cook it. But because it's a snapper, I want to just yeah, sear it just a little bit. And then what we also have is we've got some lo mein noodles. I like the thin ones, but ever since COVID, I can't find the right ones. These will work. Um, Scallions from our garden box. We've got some cilantro, jalapeno, and some sriracha. Again, a lot of different ways you can do this. I'm sure you guys do a little different, but this is the way we do. And I know I say this a lot about a lot of the recipes. Of all the things I've learned from Will and tried, this broth alone is unbelievable. Like, literally, it's unbelievable. I don't even need to put anything in it. You can just drink it. And if you make too much and you like your pets, put a tablespoon or two in their food and they will love you forever. <laughs> All right, so these are our lo mein noodles. I like to break them up. All right. We'll let those set for just a sec before we handle them and I'll be back when the noodles are done. All right, noodles are done. Kind of just diced up the fish a little bit. A lot of it finished because it wasn't cooled all the way, but I have just been informed by my chief uh, advising staff <laughs> Will that it is not customary to boil the noodles in the broth. So learn something new every day. Why apparently, not? Apparently it makes the broth cloudy. There's some type of uh what you who's it? Coating on the noodles. Like an anti caking agent. And to keep them separate. There you go. So a little bit of broth. Oh, this is gonna. This is definitely gonna be overflowed. <laughs> How much protein, babe? Oh, is this mine? Okay. Um, yeah. that's plenty. <laughs> Sorry. All right. A little bit of cilantro. Ooh, not too. Oh, yeah. Scallions. And jalapenos. How many jalapenos? Um, that's Ooh. good. It smells so oh, good. Okay. <laughs> Get out my glasses. Yeah. It's good you had your protective eyewear on. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> this is sriracha bottle. <gasps> you want sriracha? Yes. Mm. It smelled good downstairs when you were yeah. cooking it. Yeah. And I'm not gonna make Madeline taste test this because it is smoking hot, but again, 
if you like soup, you don't like soup, try this. This is the one thing that Will has taught me. I literally will eat it three or four times a week. It, it's just unbelievable. The amount of flavor that's in the broth alone is just incredible. So and we tinker around that we add and take stuff out depending on what we have. But that is all we've got for this evening. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks for coming along. Again, Malin has started her journey. Um, a little bit of time freedom in her future. So I'll tag her social media stuff below if you want to follow along on her adventure. If you're looking to buy a house, <laughs> looking to go on a paddleboard rental or paddleboard tour down here in the Keys. She is your gal. Do it all. Other, other than that, <laughs> thanks so much for your time. Be sure to hit the like button. Uh, leave a comment if you have any questions or you want to tell me what I did wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we will see you guys in the next one. Later. Bye.